Behind every successful car brand, there is a coveted anchoring product. For Porsche, it's the 911. For Toyota, it's the Corolla. For Perodua, well, it's none other than the Myvi. Since its debut in 2005, the Myvi has consistently been the best-selling car in Malaysia. Perodua has sold over 1.3 million units to date, and sales for the Myvi averages at about 70,000 units annually. For the third generation model, nearly 300,000 units of the Myvi have been sold since its launch in 2017, so it is, on many levels, the nation's overachiever. People can't seem to get enough of it, and they'll find the new one much harder to resist. My name is Matthew, and this is my review of the 2022 Parodua Myvi facelift. For a midlife update, this is the biggest one in the Myvi's history. Up front, the fascia is new with slimmer looking headlights thanks to a black strip of plastic on top, vertical LED DRLs which is a first for Opera Dua, and automatic power folding side mirrors for the first time. However, the DRLs get shut off when the main beam is on. Normally, DRLs just dim down, but not these. These ones shut off completely. No change in wheel design and factory tire fittings, but black painted side mirror caps are now standard across the board, just like the Ativa. At the back, you find a new bumper, also with vertical trim inserts to match the front DRLs, and keyless entry with push start button is now standard across the board, but I wish the passenger side can also get a keyless entry button. Inside, there are a couple of big changes, starting with the steering wheel, which has been lifted off the Ativa, and the instrument panel is now of the Optitron style, so it's black when it's not lit, and when you turn on the engine, it comes to a nice glow, the Myvi will greet you, and you get this really nice looking cluster. I think this is a welcome return. It's been missed, but I'm so glad to see it come back, because this on the AV looks really good. In the middle, you have this bigger 6.9 inch touchscreen display. So the UI is the same as the Ativa. It's responsive also. It's not the best UI and there's still no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. But can you imagine if Broda did that, they give you a touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? It's probably going to obliterate a lot of the competition. And I think it's only a matter of time before they do that. And when they do that, it's going to be another big deal. But as it is, it's okay, and if you use an Android phone, you can at least use the mirror link function. There's also an HDMI port for you to use if you so fancy. Another nice bonus that Peradua is giving for buyers of the AV is a full window tint as well as the dash cam. So if you're buying the AV, you get to save at least a few, maybe a thousand ringgit, if not a little bit more, maybe two thousand ringgit, depending on the quality of the tint. And this is a good quality tint, yeah? So it's extra money that you get to save. Another change include this red trimming around the air vents. I'm not too crazy about it, but its function is to reduce glare when you're driving under the hot sun. For some people, this specific area of the air vent trim can be a bit blinding when you're driving in the hot sun. But so far, with the experience that I have had over maybe the past three days, uh, I've never had any glaring issues. It's just that, you know, the red could be a little bit too loud for my liking. Further down here, it might not look like much, but you get uh, rear seat belt indicators as well as a dedicated off button replacing the memory one and memory two function. Lah. So if you have your fan speed on high, uh, you can just press off instead of pressing multiple times the reduce fan button to bring down or turn off the air conditioning system. So that is a good quality of life improvement right there, but you can still retain the memory one and memory two functions by cycling through this mem button. There you go. Off and just off. While the seat design may look new, it's purely aesthetic because the shape of the seats are still the same. That means there's no improvements made to the seating comfort whatsoever, but you know, at least the seats look better than before. In this regard, I think Proton does it better. The seats on the Iris and Persona are much more comfortable and if you do a lot of interstate or long hours driving, then the Proton would offer a more comfortable and pleasant seating experience. 
Elsewhere, the practical bits remain. You still get the side seat pockets, a dedicated handbag hook, two additional Tetare hooks at the back, as well as one dedicated charging port for the rear passengers. As you can see at the back, it is pretty spacious. I would say class leading because just look at the amount of knee room I get. That's about two and a half fists worth of leg room for me to freely move around or just lay part like this. And for those of you who don't know, I am 172 centimeters tall. This is my driving position and I have this much of headroom. So that's about a fist's worth of headroom, which is not too bad considering the slightly uh, sportier profile of the Mavi compared from the second generation. So that I like. Um, they didn't change anything in terms of seating comfort here. So I think it's okay. The seats could be better, but then um, it's not something that a lot of people or a lot of Mavi owners are complaining for a car in its price. And considering the features that you get, which are these handbag hooks right here uh, and both seats and seat pockets, there's really not a lot of compromise in terms of usability and practicality as opposed to comfort. So that is a good trade-off in my opinion. And for those of you who want more loading space, these seats do come in a 60-40 split configuration so you can fold the seats down. But you know, you don't get center armrest. And the amount of storage you get is limited to the seat pockets right here as well as a small cubby on the door and maybe for some loose item in the door handles. Okay, when it comes to driving, there is no change done whatsoever to the engine. So you still get the same 1.3 litre and 1.5 litre four cylinder naturally aspirated engines. For this AV, it gets the 1.5, which makes 102 horsepower and 136 newton meters of torque. That is not quite as big on paper as it is like the Honda City's 121 PS engine, but you know, it's still a decent performer. And new here, this time is the DCVT transmission, which replaces the ancient 4AT. So in terms of facelifts, this is arguably the biggest mechanical upgrade the Myvi has ever gotten in its lifetime. Now, DCVT is actually Daihatsu's technology and it's meant for DNGA cars. So any new model that sits on the Daihatsu new global architecture platform. But as you know, the Myvi doesn't sit on DNGA, yet it still gets this DCVT. So the bulk of the cost of uh, the development cost of 50 million ringgit has to come from the CVT. Fun fact, the electrical architecture and computers for this car along with the DCVT is plucked from the Ateva. So that's why you get ASA 3.0 and all the stuff like adaptive cruise control. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I think that is a fact that you should know because it's not a simple plug and play and 50 million ringgit is a lot of money, but now you know where the bulk of it went to. Okay, so now back to the gearbox. Um, what do I think of the DCVT? It is actually very, very well tuned. Uh, it's smooth and you get this really nice linear and progressive acceleration profile which is smoother and a little bit more mature, more refined than what it was before with the 4AT. So this feels like a big, big upgrade in terms of driving but it just doesn't have the seven virtual ratios uh, that you get with the Activa. I think that is a fine omission because this is really, by all accounts, a really well-engineered gearbox and for it to work on the Myvi, it's really good luck. One of the many benefits that you get with the CVT is of course the efficiency and number two when you're cruising at like for example at 80 kilometers per hour the engine is only revving at below 1500 rpm and when you take it to 110 like I am now just listen to the noise it's not very loud and you can see the turn of speed is actually quicker than before. Now Perodor says the car with the DCVT performs 20% quicker in terms of acceleration compared to the 480 but it feels slightly faster than that. This again is a well-tuned gearbox and when you're doing at 110 km per hour, if you're cruising at this speed, the engine just hovers at 2000 rpm. So this is where the 5% of increased uh, fuel efficiency comes from. So now it does 21.1 km per litre of fuel used and based on our testing, we got about 19 kilometers, 19.5 on mixed driving, mind you. So this figure is only something I can dream of driving in my RCZ. This Myvi is 
is actually quite something. Also, another thing I noticed when driving or cruising at 80 to 110, it is quieter compared to before. Now, Perdo didn't make any NVH improvements from before, so whatever you get from before is exactly the same configuration. So whatever quietness that you experience from driving this car comes from the CVT, which keeps engine revs lower, and I think a lot of the mechanical noise has been filtered out. You do get a bit of a tire raw, but that's because you know it's running on Goodyear Triple Max, the Assurance Triple Max. So if you put on better tires, more expensive tires, it's going to be quieter than the Proton Iris. That car can be a bit loud, especially with the punch CVT, but this is by all accounts a really good CVT if you consider the many types of CVTs out there. Okay, so back to the 20% quicker acceleration. What does that mean in real life? So according to Perodua, the new MyV will now do the 0 to 100 in 10.2 seconds. But to me, the real-world performance metric is the engine's newfound eagerness to lurch forward when you press the throttle. So it's quite responsive as well. And before you know it, 100 kilometers per hour. So it is pretty easy to overtake, go uphill, do a bit of spirited driving. And you also get the Ativa's power mode here. It's like instant sport mode button by pressing a button on the steering wheel instead of shifting the gear into S. Speaking of shifting, the gearbox now offers D, S, and B. So that replaces the D4, 3, and 2 for um, driving. So S means sport mode, um, pretty self-explanatory. And B is for engine braking. So I'll give you a very easy scenario to follow. S is something you would engage when you're going up Gunting, and B is useful when you are descending from Gunting. So that's pretty much how it works. Okay, so that pretty much covers the mechanical changes, although I wish to point out that Perdoa didn't make any other upgrades to damping, and I, I actually wish that Perodo would pay a little bit more attention to damping because as it is, it's a bit firm, a bit bouncy and less refined compared to the Proton Iris. So if you really enjoy driving, maybe the Proton still offers that edge in terms of dynamics and just uh, overall fitness when it comes to damping setup. And whereas for the Perodo, it's more like an all-rounder, but it doesn't particularly shine well in uh, damping so hopefully the next generation MyV can solve this issue and I want to talk about the biggest upgrade next to the DCVT and that has to do with ASA 3.0. Now the MyV went from having no cruise control at all to suddenly having adaptive cruise control. So that is again a monumental jump for the MyV. It also has lane kick control so whenever the systems detect that you are veering off your lane it will just gently tug you back into your lane and keeping your car straight in the center adaptive cruise control works from 30 kilometers per hour to 125 kilometers per hour and the only thing about this system is that it doesn't have low speed follow but if you put all the asa 3.0 systems together prodoa says this is technically level two semi-autonomous driving Autonomous Emergency Braking or AEB is standard across the board and it can now be triggered infinitely which means it's no longer limited to three times before you need to restart the engine to reset the system. The new ASA also offers nighttime vehicle detection but just keep in mind that the cars have to have their tail lights on. Now before this when Perodo announced the Ativa it set the bar for a car under 70,000 ringgit to have this breadth of safety systems. It's unprecedented in the market and right now they've won up themselves with the introduction of the MyV with ASA 3.0. It's almost like flexing at this point but all things considered I really really applaud Perodua for doing it. I think it's very welcome and this is what a true market leader should do. They should not rest on their laurels and that's what Perodua is showing us. They are giving us their latest and greatest and I think every other car maker whether you're premium, whether you're national or non-national, this is something you have to follow, emulate, and probably compete with because this is the way it should be, you know? So for other car brands out there who are watching Proton or, you know, car buyers such as yourself, you should put a little bit more emphasis on safety features because the number of cars on the road will not go down. In fact, it's only going to pick up. 
Prodova has sold 1.3 million units of the MyV and imagine if 1.3 million of those cars have AEB that would make the roads so much safer better late than never and over the past five years I think Prodova has really upped their game in terms of safety features so this is what a good market leader should do set the bar high for others to follow and you know you don't you don't slack lah so yeah, I really think Peridot has to be celebrated for doing this But that said, the MyV is not the perfect car It's damn near close though But if only it came with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto As well as slightly better driving dynamics Then I really think they have a true flagship That other people will really have a hard time catching The MyV also comes with Auto High Beam But not the more advanced adaptive driving beam found on the Ativa that's still okay to me though because I find auto high beam to be plenty useful in most cases anyway. Okay, so here is my summary of the 2022 Peridot MyV facelift first impressions review. Now, like I said earlier in the video, the changes may not look like much. You know, aesthetically, it's probably only a slight upgrade from before. Okay, you've got the LED DRLs. But all things considered, it doesn't look like much. But when you dive beyond skin deep, you will find that the upgrades are absolutely substantial. It is in fact the single biggest upgrade the Myvi has gotten in its entire lifetime. And we're talking just facelift exercise here, not new gen. But even on that scale, this facelift is a very big jump forward in terms of equipment level and just the way the car drives now because the new DCVT changes the driving characteristics of the car it is quieter, it is more refined, it is quicker and at the same time more fuel efficient than before so you're getting a lot of benefits with just a single upgrade but as we know by now it is not just a single upgrade because you've got the electrical architecture, the computers, the new TCU and all that sort of jazz to make the car the package that it is today at 60,000 ringgit that is going to be a very difficult car to beat no matter what segment you are in and no matter if you know you're priced at 200,000 ringgit this kind of features and safety aspects almost unbeatable almost I also like the cranberry red which is exclusive to the AV and then you've got the new steering wheel which I really like because it feels good as well and the buttons are really nice to the touch and the instrument cluster, the Optitron style, that really tickles my fancy. The color MID in the middle is also quite a nice thing to have. You get a lot of things from the Ativa, but the MyV is still considered a flagship here. And so again, I just want to reiterate, for under 60,000 ringgit, this should be a serious contender for your money if you're looking to buy your kid their first car, or even if you just want a daily runabout to just drive around, save a bit of money and not feel like you are driving a econo box. Yeah. So at the end of the day, which is the MyV you should get? I think if you can afford it, the AV is what you should be going for because usually the AV has the highest amount of uptake from people at least in the beginning before it starts tapering off. If you're deciding between the MyV and the Ativa, I think that changes the narrative a little bit because if you want the Ativa, it's a slightly more premium looking car but this objectively feels like the quicker car it's also more fuel efficient than the Ativa and it also rides better than the Ativa so depending on what you really want if you want the Ativa because of its style go for it if you can afford the 10k difference between the AV models uh, then by all means go for it but as for the MyV uh, I want to give props to Perodua once again for doing what they did with this car it is an achievement and the rest better buck up because this is what a true market leader is and setting the tone for the entire market to follow is a good example of a true market leader so i guess i would end on that note do let me know what you think of the myvi in the comment section below and i will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching and bye bye